Okay, part two. I got a little bit off of track, so I'm going to finish what I was saying and get back on track. So the stereotypes, and I was telling him, you know, we can't blame all the Muslims for those Muslims. Just like you can't blame all the Japanese for Pearl Harbor. You can't blame the Koreans for the Korean War. You can't blame all the Vietnamese people for the Vietnam War. Now, that being said, you know, the group kind of got a little upset. So the conversation ended. And we went back to what the group is basically for, talking about sexy chicks and having sexy chicks on it and flashing some pictures every now and again. All right, so that being said, we did that. And the thing ended. And now I'm going to get back to your Native American history lesson to finish this video. Because um, I could have made it one video and solved the problem. But I figured 20 minutes was way too long and I went off on a tangent. So we have Native Americans. No one really knows why Native Americans left Asia 20,000 years ago. Before the white man discovered America. Which gave the Native Americans um, enough of an oppressive foothold and between battling over territories amongst themselves you know they had to fight to survive in a new world which had new creatures that they had never seen before or creatures they had seen before they just didn't know what they seen before so you know they're they're doing all this stuff and their tribes are splintering all over the world of the new world so you have people who decided we're going to stay in Alaska and part of Russia. Those were the Eskimos, the Inuit. I didn't say it right, so we're just going to call them Eskimos. And those Eskimos also moved toward the North Pole and Iceland and Greenland. It might be just Greenland. I'm not really sure. The map isn't specific. But uh, like people like from Bjork's country, if they have any Native Americans or Asianist people up there that aren't transferred from China or Japan or Korea or Vietnam, they're naturally born there because they walked there with the rest of the Native Americans. They decided, we don't want to be in Alaska, we want to be up there. Some of those guys branched off into the First Nations in Canada. I gave you guys the map in the other video. Then the nations began to splinter more. As the nations grew, they splintered more and the tribes became to split and go down the west, middle, and east coast Native Americans of America, which could span anywhere from the Hopi to the Sioux to the Lakota to the Apache to the Mohawk to the Cherokee to the Manhattan Indians. That should cover the base of America. I think I covered most of that. And then, um, you know, you, you got Pueblos as well. Now, those, I went down the line, you know, for the middle. You have the seal hunters, I forgot what their name is, but they're in the, uh, close to Canada, close to Seattle, close to Oregon area. They made a movie called Well Hunters, but I forgot the name of the tribe. So that being said, the farther down you go west and then inward, you got Lakota, etc., etc., and all the micro tribes, they all splintered from the big, great splinter of crossing the land bridge. Then we go further down, you hit the Mexico, and you have the Mexicans and New Mexicans, and that area, they're all Mexicans, but they also spawned off from the Aztec, the Mayan, and the Incan, and the Amazons. So all of those run all the way down both the borders on the outside and the inside of South America. So legally and biologically, they're all Native Americans, all right? Now, again, back in 1924, when the Native American Rights Act, the Native American Rights Act was passed by whichever president was in charge, um, the territories where you were no longer claimed to be Native American started from Mexico down through Panama all the way to hit to South America. And why was that? Because later on in life, which would be up to speed to us, they could not claim Native American heritage, all right? Now, that was triage for a reason, so that just in case there would be more people who would want to claim this Native American history and this Native American rights, well, if you're Native American and you were born below New Mexico, you don't count. So biologically, you are Native American, which also means biologically you are Asian. The reason why you guys speak Spanish was because Cortez conquered the southern regions of America and all the way into South America 
and took over the Mayans, the Incans, the Aztec, etc. Now, I could be wrong, and you could fact check it and write me down a comment, and that's fine. I actually hope that I am wrong. I know for a fact about the whole Native Americans being Asian thing. I'm not wrong there. But for everything else, with the exception of the Rainbow Coalition, who were Native Americans also, but most of them were um, indoctrinated or um, adapted into the tribe, and most of them were black. They're still having a debate on if the Native Americans of America were originally black people first, and then Native Americans assimilated them, and then slavery came along, and some of them were mistaken and put into chains because they were black. It's a long, tenuous story, but here's the thing on that, because the Aborigines were also black, and they never came out of Africa. They originated in Australia. So, if you want to do any fact-checking, there you go, right there. I just gave you some things that you can go fact check and correct me. Because I'm not a genius. I don't know everything, but I know enough. <coughs> Excuse me. Anyway, that being said, I'm out of tea. That being said, you know, we go through history. And we know only what they allow us to know in school. And we know that slavery turns your white friends against you because they are afraid of you as a black man and what you may do for what their ancestors did to your ancestors, which is a crock of shit. Come on, white people. A lot of us aren't that fucking hung up on slavery because if your name is Kanye West, slavery is a choice. Anyway, moving away from that, all jokes aside, we have to understand that in history, there are always going to be shades of gray and we're going to have to face them and figure out what you want to take from it. Because you can't change history, you can only learn from it. Now, with the Native Americans, you know, um, me being part Native American, people laugh all the time when I tell them I'm dreadfully afraid of horses. Okay? In my defense, I was bit by a horse as a child. It completely traumatized me. So, yeah, I'm dreadfully afraid of horses. The thing with everything you read, I... Um, Going back to the Kanye thing about slavery and stuff, not that it has no relevance here, but it does have some relevance. When you are a people who have never dealt with a heavier ordinance than what you've been used to, Native Americans had bows, arrows, knives, and spears. And most of those were not made with technology. Most of the knives and spears and arrows were made from rocks that they sharpened up with other rocks. So, you know, that kind of... um work on our own people, but when the Europeans got off the boat, they had this thing called gunpowder and musket balls. One shot, one kill. And nine times out of ten, they had a very well-organized plan where the first grunts to get off the boat would already be loaded before they got off the boat. They'd take their position, and they'd level the playing field. They'd put the guns back up, they pop to the side, load the powder, pack it, while the other line right behind them has got their ass covered, and shoot. Then they go back and they load up while the second, the first line's reloaded and they're now the third line. And then the second line is reloading as the third line has come up. By then, half the enemies have been pretty much fucked up and everybody's trying to pull out. So, the third line, we're not letting them go anywhere. We're going to send the message. So, they level the people. So therefore, you know, with the musket balls and the gunpowder, slavery really wasn't so much as a choice or it's more like you're going to do this by course or by force. And most of the time it was done by force. Now, for the conquering of America from the Native Americans, it was a long process, but it wasn't as long as you think. It was definitely a hard process because every tribe put up some, um, some battle fatigue and stuff. Um... This Custard's Last Stand was a unition of tribes that went against Custard. Um, Sitting Bull, he was a BMF. Apache Geronimo was the BMF. And he had other Native Americans that aren't so well noted, but they made differences, they made changes. But however, the Europeans decided that it was okay to sterilize the women and kill the men. And to save the child, they basically beat the Indian out of them, chopped off their hair, sent them to European schools, and killed their language. Now, as shameful and as painful and as hard as that is to hear, there be grains of truth in that. 
And um, I was watching some videos on YouTube about that, and they called it um, Kill the Indian, Save the Man. Because for the Europeans, the thing that made Native Americans Native Americans was the fact that they lived in the woods, they were wild, they did things that the uh, Europeans never seen before. Which is nothing new for Native Americans because for 20,000 years, that's how they survived here. Also, making peace with guardians and folklore and all kinds of other stuff that's like a story that has nothing to do with this. But, you know, Coyote the Trickster, the Deer Woman, uh, Thunderbird, the Yeti, etc. And each tribe has a different guardian and a thing and you just have to go and fact check that and find out with all the myths and legends they had 20,000 years for them to exist so you know um, the best thing I can tell you about that is every story that you hear will be similar and different and change tribally now the thing with Native Americans you know because like I said all of America not just the North America with Canada but the South America also and the islands was inhabited by Native Americans before Columbus got there that being said now we bring it back up to the present day, when you see how people are fighting for NARF, the Native American Rights Fund, or for other things to keep Native American children from being taken out of the homes, or if they are taken out of the homes, they're put in Native American homes instead of non-Native American homes. If that doesn't make sense, you have to like catch up with me. Anyway, there have been acts of all that, and they have um, done things to do against that. Now, finally, you know, I know you see them damn lights. Anyway, so I can hurry up and finish this video before I have to go put an arrow through somebody's chest. The, um, the whole fact is that Native Americans had time to not only conquer but thrive in America. Nowadays, not so much. Uh, laws were made to keep Native Americans on lands that were basically uh, frugalous or not usable. However, the gods were great, or the creator was great, and um, they found a way to thrive on these lands. They killed all the buffaloes so the Native Americans could starve, except for a few when they got on the endangered species list. So now the buffalo are making a comeback. They killed a lot of food sources that Native Americans ate. You know, coyotes, wolves, prairie dogs, they killed things that Native Americans ate because Native Americans didn't have any other food sources outside of buffalo and whatever else was the game in that area. So deer, bear, otters, things like that. Things that Native Americans ate. Extenuating, let's just say, if it was a domesticated wildlife animal, the tribes here pretty much ate them. And then stereotypes also keep um, screwing things up. So I'm going to end this here because my videos are being interrupted by assholes who can't see that I got those goddamn lights right there on. Yeah, they're on. You probably can't see them because you're so far away. But they're definitely on. See, they're on. And um, I'm getting tired of trying to um, talk over people. So thank you guys for tuning in. I'm James Williams. She's come for Havoc number two. Just 14 minutes that you can't get back of your life, and I'm sorry for that. But hopefully I educated you a little bit. Thank you.